welcome to the community of Rampanagas. I hope I have it right. We're just between Rampanagas and Toko. And we are here today in this community to not really bring you a story because stories are fictions and things that are made up. Right? What we're going to be doing today is telling you of a real life drama that took place just behind me here on April the 10th. When a young man at 10 a.m. in the morning doing what he loves best, deep sea diving. Went out with some friends, normal morning, 10 o'clock, but found himself in difficulties. This young man spent 17 hours on the sea and swam for more than 44 miles to safety. So this is not a story. This is a true life episode that took place here. And I have the, that gentleman with me this morning, Christopher Google. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, sir. And it's a pleasure. It is, it is. Now, this is a young man who is normally does diving for a hobby. Came out here on Wednesday, April the 10th with a couple of friends and got into difficulties at 10 a.m. Let's start with that morning. You got up, you decided to come out, it was a normal. You know, sometimes people tend to say when they go in and do something, they might get a little yeah. feeling yeah, yeah. or you might see something. But that morning was a normal morning for you? Well, that morning was was very was very nice. Mm. We just normally look at the charts, plan our dives, mm. make sure the water clean, ties, everything was was good. Mm. Right? We get up about three o'clock in the morning, head up to Toko on this beach here. And we reach up here about six o'clock, and we start loading the boat, which is that boat there. That, that, that's the right. Okay. Yeah, that boat there. Yeah. And we head out. So you all head out from right here. Yes, we head out from right here. Yeah. We load up up there by the road, head out, and we head out approximately about 25 miles outside, according to the GPS. Yeah. Right. Upon doing that, we reach out there, water was nice, water was flat, we reach out there in two tools. We both have a big engine, we fly out there. It was nice. Everybody making joke, we're not sure the biggest fish, everybody on the boat joking. It was nice, sunny. And upon doing that, we decide to tank up. Right? Um, that's all your gears, your yeah, tanks, all, and, all yeah. your diving equipment. So, you, so it's not that you all went out there unequipped. You were fully equipped. Well, we was equipped. Right. Right. I wouldn't say fully equipped because we do not have the most expensive equipment. Okay. Right. Due to costly, mm -hmm. so we buy things that you know that what could work for us mm -hmm. and what we comfortable with. Yeah. Right. Um, I dive with a a backpack. A tank, wetsuit, weights, fins, guns, snorkels, stuff like that. I didn't have a VC vest, mm -hmm. a BC vest, because it's a little expensive, mm -hmm. right? So we dive with that and we find more. You get to maneuver yourself properly if you're going underneath rock and stuff like yeah. that. So we reach out there around quarter to quarter to ten. Right? We begin diving. Me and two of my Bodies, we dive down. Re regular guys. Yeah, right. regular dive bodies. We, yeah. I dive it right through on the East Coast because mm -hmm. we work as a team on the East Coast. On the East Coast is a place that I supposed to see you, you supposed to see me, right? If you see any shark for some reason, you come and let me know. Mm -hmm. Hey, shark in the water, mm -hmm. you know stuff like that. So we dive down while going down. My two bodies was on my left hand side, I was on the right hand side. While going down, watching my, my, my dive computer, hit about 50, 60 feet max. There's a reef we diving on. 
look at that reef, all I just felt my whole body drag right. My whole body just whoosh and going with the current. Now, I go down to the bottom of the rock, look around for my dive bodies. No way. Look, look all around, look around. See what? Where is this boy? I see. This current too strong, the gun in my hand doing so, moving left, right. I was like, nah, I can't even this. So at that point, I lost my bodies. I decided to surface. But at that point, did you did you did you come to terms that you were in difficulty? Or you were just like, okay, I'm coming back up and I'm gonna be well, safe. I didn't I didn't find I was in any difficulties at that point in right. time, right? Because I think and I would have just come up on yeah, the boat right there, right? So I follow my computer and I come up, come up, gradually come up, come up, come up. I can't come up too fast, right? And while I surface, I look around. I look all around. I saw the boat approximately about a mile away. So that undercurrent took me from 50, some 50 to 60 feet, took me about a mile away drifting while I coming up, right? Upon doing that, when I see the boat, first thing I did, took the gun up in the air, wave the gun, blow, blow my whistle, shout, boat, they did not hear me. So at that point in time, I decide, I say, well, hear what? Current pushing downstream to land, right? You have a choice. It's either swim or die. But that was no way on my mind. I didn't study that. And I, I said that you have a choice, mm. right? Is either swim or stay here and die. Okay, that, is, that, is, that, is, that is reality, yeah. right? So I decided to swim to land. So I took my landmarks to land. I measured land with my two hands, left and right. I saw land was, one point was here, one point was here. I took the middle of the mountain and I I swam, I swam, I swam, I swam until about, about an hour into the dive, I decided, well, you know what? Things need to go. Weight belt. Drop, first thing I dropped was my weight belt. And then continue swimming. Saw some little fishes. Start playing with them, you know, they're all in front of me, just to keep my mind on a real narrow straight path, you know, not to study anything outside there. Yes, I know by myself, right? And there's no one around, and it's just me and your father, right? And continue swimming until about 12 o'clock in the day, 12, 1 o'clock. I heard an engine, I stop. I look around, look around. We're going up and down, up and down. Now I, I saw the boat on my left hand side, straight up on my left hand side, but it was approximately about a mile away, the same distance. When I surfaced, I saw the boat. So I decided to keep on swimming, keep on swimming until about three o'clock, four o'clock coming down there. I decided again problems with breathing. Right? The wave hitting from behind, wave hitting at the side, water going in my mouth. Now I took out the, the regulator, I use all the tank. I had about 2,000 PSI in the tank, use all the tank completely. So I took out the regulator, took out my wetsuit, my upper wetsuit, I have a two-piece wetsuit, and took out the tank, tie up the tank to use it as a flotation device. So I, I hold the tank in front of me like this, right? Take the regulator hose, cut the regulator hose and use it as a snorkel because while diving, I don't use snorkel, I use regulator, right? So, cut the hose. Now the hose is very small and very difficult to breathe, right? You have to pull very hard. And about six o'clock in the day, I was looking out for light and land. I saw my first light. Then I saw lights, 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 lights going down the stream, right? And I decided to swim, keep on swimming. Now my throat is hurting me. Behind my right, left foot bleeding because of the fins, right? With the constant moving. 
behind my foot here was hurting, right? Feeling tired, hungry, thirsty, you know? But I had no choice. I had to swim to save my life, continue swimming until about, until about 12 o'clock, about 12 o'clock in the night. The current started to pick back up, but during the course of the, the night from around 10, 9, 8, coming up, all coming up there, I fell asleep about four times on myself. And I shake up myself and say, Chris, you can't fall asleep here, otherwise you're going down, right? Well, I start praying from the moment I, I didn't, I, I start praying from the moment I, I saw the boat and I realized that you're on your own. Yeah, yeah you're I'm on, your on my own. own. I started praying from there. And was it that point you re that it really came to terms with you yourself that I had problems, or it happened before? Where, what, 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 what time? It happened at ten o'clock. But what time did it really come to you that hey, well, I, 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 something terrible going to happen here now? Well, it kicked in from the moment. I saw the boat, and the distance I saw the boat, and I realized... That was the only help, uh -uh. and gone. They are going and fine. And I said to myself, I said, they are going and fine. Because the speed that current moving at, on top of that water, yeah. it fast. And I swim with the current, right? So when I saw the boat, I saw the back of the engine, the boatman stand up in the boat, you know, I, I could make out the boat. And I said to myself, I say. If those guys think something happened to me, they are not going to leave there anytime soon to come to look for me. So I don't have a couple hours going downstream. Right? So all of that going through my mind because I knew they would go back down, look to see if I tie up on a rock, see if something happened, if regulator fails, something, something happened to me underneath there. Right? So I, I, I started to think about all these things. I started to think ahead. Right? And as dad told me, you know, Say, see you, you too brave. You going East Coast soon, right? And eventually, I end up East Coast. And he, he know how East Coast is because he was in a similar situation to me, right? The same current wise and stuff like that, mm -hmm. right? So he tell me certain things that you know what I need to do, you know, like strip yourself, you know, naked. But I wasn't stripping myself naked because there are sharks, barracudas, you know, stuff like that. But what, but what do you mean? But naked or closing, the shark coming by you still. Well, yes, but what, yeah. what do you mean clothes it's, make you heavy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, get right? rid of um, excess. So you need to um, get rid of all excess baggage. equipment, yeah. anything like that. But I kept, I kept my, my gun, regulator. I kept my uh, backpack because it was light, you know, but I just got the tank about 12 o'clock in the night, right, when I realized the current picked back up, right, and I decided, you know what, land ahead and on is the land. There's about 12 o'clock in the night when the current picked back up, the current started to pull back upstream. I realized that when the wave started to hit me from, it started to cap in front of me. Mm -hmm. Now, all the time it was capping in the behind, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, so it pushing up, pushing up. Yeah. Right now it's capping in front. I realized I drifted. So I said, eh, eh, you are taking me back where I came from. I go to land. So I saw a hundred lights on land, and I saw one particular light. And at 12 o'clock, I decided to swim to this light. And why swim into this light? The, the whole mountain blank off with rain, right? So I swim in, the whole mountain blank off. I was like, where's the world? Now, mm. pitch black, mm. pitch, pitch, pitch black, right? Um, the only thing you could hear is wave bashing, wave bashing. You can see lights, but yet still, it's looking so close, but far, right? And I keep praying, 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 just praying, never stop praying, you know? And I decide, you know what? I need to see my family. I need to laugh again with my friends. I was mostly, I wasn't country. I wasn't 
thinking about myself outside there. I was more thinking about the people around me, people who I just be around. You, you kind know? of like fill your mind with positive thoughts then, you know, correct, nothing negative correct. then. Nothing negative, yeah, you know, yeah, because yeah. If, if I did, you know, things would have turned you know, out. Fear, fear would have come in and. A different yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, I'm, I'm a very brave guy, you know, and to give up, you know, I said to myself, you know, if I give up here, you know, my loved ones and stuff like that, they will miss me and I will miss them. So I cannot give up. I cannot give up no matter what. My feet, my foot, my body, my whole, everything could hurt. It, it could get damaged. You know what? After a few weeks, after a few months, it will heal. It's pain. It's all humans, it will heal. Right? And I decided to swim hard, 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 hard. But everything I got, I, I swim sideways, backwards, you name it, I swim in the water. Just swim, 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 swim. And I saw this light, and I just swim to this light, and swim, swim, swim. And I heard rocks, wave bashing on my left hand side, wave bashing on my right hand side. And I came up on a beach. I, I don't know the name of the beach. At that point in time, yeah. I knew I was somewhere in Toko, right? And I took the gun and I put it in front of me. They have an average where rock is. I don't know the area. I'm right here in rock on my left hand side, here in rock on my left, on my right hand side. And the speed I come in at with my head down in the water, yeah. cutting coming, I yeah. come in, yeah. I come in speeding. Yeah. The speed I move in with, yeah, if I rock. hit a rock or anything there, I could knock yeah. out and yeah. there's problems. You know, you reach so far, you reach ladders right there and you knock out here. So I took all safety measures, you know, to safeguard myself. So I did that. Feel the gun, chuck sand, I said, nice. Go up a little bit again. Feel a chuck again. I said, nice. So I turn backwards. Now wave coming in. Again, rock on left hand side, rock on right hand side. Wave bashing on the rock. You know, walk backwards. Take all my gears. Grab it up. Hug it up. And as I come up on the beach, I said, thank you, Jesus. I reach. And that was what time? I was three. 3 a.m. in the morning. So from 10 o'clock Wednesday morning, morning, you were outside, outside here. Outside in the sea. No branch. No branch. No, no life jacket. <laughs> no life jacket. Nothing to hold on to. Nothing to hold on to. Except that faith you had in you, knowing right. that, you know, right. you're going to be okay. But yep. before we get to the part where you reach on the land, did any moment in that period of time you thought about giving up? No. I had to say, no. at that point in time, negative, I take all negative mm. and, and put it behind me. I put all negative behind me. All I said when I fell asleep a couple, about four times, I said, Chris, if you fall asleep here, you will go down. Right? That was the only negative thing come to my mind. But everything else, I put positive. I put positive things in my mind. You know, study positive things, you know. People that you want to meet, people that you want to see, you know, stuff like that. And negative was nowhere near, nowhere, nowhere, nowhere near in my mind. Outside there, in that ocean, that day and night. You know? And Coming to my faith, I really believe that, you know, my mom, Jesus, you know, people who prayed for me when they hear I was missing, the amount of people call me from all over the, the world, call me and, you know, like, hey, Christopher, so happy that you're alive and what you went through, you know, that it had a, it had a God and, you know, stuff like that, so, you know. And people are saying that, you know, Chris, you know, what 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 you what you what you tell us here, you know, it impacting our life, you know, it changed certain things, you know, mm. have us to think a, a certain way in life, you know. And not to give up. Because haven't I give up that night or that day? I would not be standing here today to tell my testimony, to tell my story to the nation, to the world. You know, and I'm happy 
to, to do that, you know, to, to share it with people, you know, and and tell them, you know what, life, 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 we go through plenty challenge things in life, you know, we go up the ladder, we go down the ladder, you know, but I just want to say, you know what, no matter what in life, just never give up. No matter, it can be the smallest thing, just never give up. I'm an example. I never give up. And haven't I give up? Like I said, I will not be here today to say, you know what, never give up. And you know, I will always push. Never give up. No matter what and anything you do, never give up. Okay, let's go back now to your coming into land, but you didn't know you was coming into land. Or well, you knew? I, I knew I was coming into land because I heard rocks. Mm. Now outside in the ocean it, it had rocks, but the rocks deep. Yeah. Right? So while I was coming closer to land, I, I started to hear the rocks on the left, hear the rocks on the right. You know? And I realized, well, hey, I'm coming into land. So I get more sense on my foot now, you know, to swim a little faster. Although my, my feet was hurting. Honestly, it was hurting like like I, I reach it, you know, and I reach on the beach, grab up everything in the water, and I come up on the beach, say, thank you, Jesus, I reach. And as I reach, my two feet, they collapse on the ground. I fell down on the ground completely. Like something that's turned off some valve in my feet with my blood and just lock it off. Right? And I said to myself, haven't that happened outside there? What would have been my situation outside there? So you know, you know, sometimes everything happens for a purpose and for a reason in life. And when I reach on the beach, I collapse. Two feet collapse. I I took the gun. I raised the gun on the side of me, and I kind of crawl to walk up to it had some rocks and thing. I, I crawl up on the rocks, and you now the pitch pitch black. I know I'm somewhere in Toko, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I study in all kind of things. I study in snake. If I come here, I don't know where it is. If I reach here and somebody see me and shoot me, you know, I all kind of thing run through my mind because I'm in a fully equipped dive suit with a spear gun in my hand, you know, stuff in my hand. And I saw some logs on my left hand side. And I decide, you know what, I'm going to lie down on those logs until I saw daylight. Until about five, half past five, I saw light. Now, during all that time, I lie down on the log, take my two friends, hug it up, you know, praying that light will reach fast, you know, and it make him cool. When I tell you cool, cool. The sea is like right there, and I like right here, like on the lock. So that breeze, yeah, you hear yeah. that breeze, whoosh, whoosh, it's like a wave. And I lie down there, and I just couch up, and I'm cold, trembling on my hands, quail up, my foot hurting me, feeling thirsty, hungry. But I had no choice to wait it out until daylight to see where I, I put in my feet. Right? Get up about half past five. No, I didn't actually went and sleep, sleep. No, I was just in between, you know, closing my eyes, getting up, closing my eyes, getting up, watching the time, closing my eyes, getting up. And I grab everything about half past five, and I decided to walk. I saw a house that I like, I saw an abandoned house. I walk up a little bank, and while walking up the little bank, saw a road, saw some electrical wires, and I said, well, wherever these wires leading, it had to be leading to. Somewhere, road somewhere, outside somewhere. by people. Mm -hmm. So I follow in them wires. Wherever the wires going, I follow in the wires. Right? So I follow in the road and I follow in the wires as a landmark. Mm -hmm. I saw the house lock up with a big padlock on it. Right? I say, well, if somebody home here, they go have a big padlock on the front door. So I decide, well, I ain't going and call it. So I saw another light outside in a little camp. So I saw some back on my left hand side. Walk up, walk up. I went through a gate. Remember seeing a white pickup, the little house with the light. So I, I walked through the gate and I I go by this little house and I said, morning, morning. 
And this guy answer. He say, morning, morning. I say, Pana, can you help me please? I'm the diver from yesterday. Was missing at sea. And I'm only now came on land to reach help. He say, all right, cool, no problem. Well, he was in shock, right? He, it so happened that morning, he was getting ready to go in the hospital because a couple hours off, a couple hours before I reached, his son got shot. Right? So he was going in the hospital. So he said, alright, cool, no problem. He tell me to sit down there. So I sat down there, trembling, lie down there, trembling. And this guy in the van, in the white pickup, come out. So he said, Red man, what happened to you? He said, partner, I was missing at sea since yesterday. And I only know which land. Right, if you could call the police, call my parents, you know, call somebody and let them know I safe, I reach safe. Because I knew when daytime reach, they was coming out to look for me. So I want to for the news to reach back to them that So they, they wouldn't waste that Yeah, waste that time and you know that you know that everybody even in the frightened and you know, all sad and you know, stuff like that. So I wanted them to to get that news that hey Chris safe, you reach and land, everything good. Right? So the guy saw me there, he said, all right, come inside. Now, came inside, he gave me a change of clothes, he made something for me to eat, he made something, some hot coffee, they gave me milk tea, you know, and stuff like that. He said, say, Chris, they asked me, what's my name? I said, Christopher. He said, all right, Christopher, you relax yourself, you're in good hands, you're in good care. You relax right in. When you're done, do relax yourself, and you're told, right? you make your first phone call. Now, at that time, I eat and stuff like that, start to catch back myself, you know, start to feel a little more warm and, you know, stuff like that. And I made my first phone call to one of my father, one of my partner father, which is the only number I could have remember. The only numbers I could have remember was only the first three digits. Out of all the time, yeah, the only yeah, yeah, yeah. numbers I can remember is the first three digits and a, and a mm. horse riding. Mm. So I remember my my friend, that number, and I call him. I remember when I call him, I say, hey, Clem. He say, hey, Reno, where was? I say, boy, <laughs> I know Richard Land. Yeah, my, tight, tight, tight. Yeah, my brother, I say, yeah, my good. I say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my. Call Antonio. I tell him, I say, well, call Antonio and then tell him I reach safe. Yeah. He said, all right, cool, no problem. So he called Antonio and them, um, my partners, he called, they, they get on, into contact with my dive buddies and stuff. And you know, and it's calls after calls coming in, you know, people from the coast guard calling to find out, hey, Christopher, it's you, you're okay, you're all right, you know, you know, stuff like that. And it's calls after calls after calls. And from there, the guy was sent to the hospital. Now he said, he said to me, he said, well, my son got not too long got shot and there's nothing he could do, yeah, right? Yeah. The hospital is taking care of his son. Yeah. So if that makes no sense, he, he rushed to go down to the hospital and he can't see his son. At least it's still a good people right? in the country. Correct. Yeah. Right? So he said to me, he said, you know what, I will see about you first and then I'll go and see about my son. Right? So he did that and we spent about an uh, hour there or half an hour and then my dive buddies come and pick me up and we went to the Toko Health Facility. They saw me, they gave me some um, some little tablets and you know, stuff like that, you know, and then they discharged me. You now we went to the police station to identify I'm Christopher, I'm yeah, alive. Yeah, yeah. You know, meet the officers and you know, thank them for you know for the for, for the for the for the work. Yeah. You know, all the effort they they put out. Right? From there, I came back right here. Right this, in this place, in right? This here. little camp right here. Yeah. You know? I remember it had a teeter outside there. And I remember talking to everyone, you know, my dive buddies come up and you know everybody was here. You know, because this is the beach we we normally launch from, mm -hmm. right? And 
he came, I came back here to collect all my gears and stuff like that to see everybody and you know, like, hey, I, I'm back, I'm safe, all the worry, <laughs> you know, stuff like that because everybody goes, who was crying, you know, stuff like that and all of a sudden, I just remember saying, I rested my hand on the car saying, I just feel it real deep, right? I remember zoning out, right, and just falling down. I remember some, someone catching me, mm -hmm. you know, someone, someone pulled me, right, and they put me on a bed here with a nice white sheet. I remember people, you know, talking, fanning me, you know, plenty of people were talking. I remember people talking, and then I remember they put me in a van with Antonio and Melissa, and my sister was in the back seat. Me and we had to Matura. When we reached Matu in Matura Health Facility, they put me on IV. Then the ambulance came and picked me up there and had, and had Sandy Gandhi. And from there, they, they warned me for a couple hours, you know, check blood work, you know, they, you know, normal procedure. And I drank about five, five, five IV, you know, five bag of drugs. You know, they say you was real dehydrated and you know stuff like that. And you know they, they made sure everything, all the blood work, everything was reading up to Mark and Sandy Gandhi. You know the nurses, everybody there was was really nice to me. I, I have to say that it was it was like you know like like my mother. You know they, they was really nice to me. You know the nurses come. You know they was talking to me. Was, I was interacting to them. You know, I remember one saying, you know, I can't swim. I say, well, you know, someday I can teach you, you know, stuff like that, like that, you know. Mm. And she say, you know, there are plenty of sharks out there. I say, well, yes, we do have sharks, but I mean, we love what we do, and you know, it's something that we when love you, to do. When you look back at this whole episode, right? What is the positivity that you take out of this? Because I mean, you said earlier, when we were talking off camera, you say you ain't supposed to be here today, right? Because we're not talking about seven hours, you know, we're talking about 17 hours, right? 17 hours, hours 25 miles outside. Right, and it's not, it's not like during the day when you could see. I mean, if you take a, 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 a pan and look at the sea, right? It's night. You cannot see anything, you know, you don't know if you're going east, west, north, south. But you made it and you're here today to tell us. And as I said in the opening, this is not a story. Stories are things that you make up and in fiction. This is a real life situation. What do you think this whole experience, how do you see this? benefiting you or do you see yourself using this to do what? Well, I see myself using this as a as a lifetime experience to, to share with people, you know, and to let them know that, you know, if I did give up outside there, I would not be here standing up today to share my lifetime story, you know, and I just want to say that never give up, and you know, that is just something I will stick with for the rest of my life, because if I did give up, I would not be here standing up today, and you know, that is just the whole point, that is just the whole thing about it, you know. Haven't I give up outside there in that ocean? You know, I would not be standing up here today. Right? And I just want people to know that. You know, if you give up, you know, nothing wrong giving up on it. Right? Because people do give up in certain things. You, you, you know, you, you, you pong in a nail, you hit your finger once, you hit your finger twice. I mean, you pong in a nail again. Call a carpenter. Yeah, you understand? Yeah. Call a carpenter. Yeah. You know what? If I did call the partner to come and rescue me outside there with the boat, man, mm. you know, I would have dead. You know, but I mean, I stick in with never give up. And I do with that for the rest of my life. And I will share 
I will go to schools, you know, and share my lifetime story with them. You know, because not everyone here today to stand up and share their lifetime story with the world. You know, very few people, Have and there's a here. handful yeah, yeah. of people that survive certain things like what I survived outside here. But I'm sure you went back in DC since the since whole um, yes, I did. experience. But going back into the sea again, did you go in a different person? Did you, did you have a bit of a little ounce of fear or uncertainty? What sort of mind frame were you in to go back in after the episode? Did you change how you were doing things before? How, how do you, how was the, the going in after was the episode? How was that for you? Was it emotional, you know, how, how was it? Well, it was like, normal right the first dive I, I took was last week last two Sundays I went out with a group of free divers I told them I said hey we are not going on tank we are going to free dive right I just free dive majority of the time I free dive I learn free diving right free diving is what what I, I do most of the times I catch all my fish lobster everything free diving Right? I only just recently start tanking about a year or two years ago. Right? And I told them I say well, here. North Coast is a more calmer water, you know, easier to handle down the islands, easier to handle. East Coast, I say I'm not coming back East Coast unless I do my diving course. That's here. Yes, that's here. Yeah. Right? Unless I do my diving course and have all my proper equipment. equipments to come back outside here because we love it you know we love this sport you know and for this to happen again is a it's not easy to really to put behind your back and say you know what yeah he survived and you know stuff like that it will always be inside here you know and, and we need to use wisdom now correct yeah. and i don't want that to happen to none of my friends or me again or to anyone Right, because it wasn't a nice experience at all, right? And I told them, I say, well, here, what? all who don't have the course, we need to get to do this course. And I'm currently doing the course with a partner of mine, yeah. who does dive too, um, Enrique's Dive World in Chagaramas. And I got certain sponsors and certain people help me to get certain equipment because, like I say, the equipments are very expensive, right? Um, I do not have a full-time job I do a lot of stuff you know every little thing I get to put my hands in I do have a little plant rental business I love plants you know I treat them like a baby you know um, I do welding I have my papers for welding I do tree cutting landscaping you name it electrical AC anything so anybody who viewing this program and wants to assist you in any one of those fields so feel free to contact you feel, feel free um, my name is Christopher Bugo on Facebook. Um, I post up most of my jobs, and if you look at my jobs, it's very excellent work. Cause you know, like you, you can you can you can't find a pen. Yeah. It's very nice work, and yeah. I have very nice customers. And everything I do, they are very happy. Mm. They are proud. You know, and I just actually see it in the face. You know, I just even ask them. You know, the show. You sure? And it's like, yes, Christopher, it looked very nice, you know, and I feel proud of, of that, you know, and I have a gift and I, I willing to use it no matter what. I willing to use my gift to the positive things. Before I let you go, I want you to look into that camera and give Trent to Bego and more so the young people, because you know we have an issue with young people right now in the country with when it comes to crime and in schools and all these other things. Some say in schools is because of peer pressure that they have all these fights and all these different things. But I want you to give them, because I know I have to talk to your dad because this whole experience that you went through, I show that there are people on the outside. It had a great impact on them. And yes, I would like to hear from it your does, dad. It does. Right? It does. So I want, before I release you, 
give to young people and children with one message for me, please. Well, what I want to say to the young people and to the old heads, right? You know what? No matter what in life, put God first. In anything you do, put God first. And no matter what, never give up, right? Like I say, if I did give up, I would not be standing up here today to say, you know what, never give up and put God first in any, any, anything in life, put God first. That is the most important thing because I survived for a reason and for a purpose. And my purpose is to come and share it with you all and tell you all and have a God and he is alive and he who saved me that's why i'm standing up here today to say never give up Trinidad and Tobago and to the world never give up it was a pleasure and we wish you all the best in everything that you do and for the people who haven't heard enough of it never give up we'll be right back after the short break with Christopher Dodd to hear his side of this whole experience. Stay, we'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to Tobago, and you heard it from the son. Now we're going to hear from the father. Joining me here now is the father of Christopher Anthony Drugo, yeah. and uh, it's a pleasure. Thank Welcome. You. And this is such a strange meeting. How we got in contact with each other. Anthony called me, thinking I was another judge. He called the wrong George, thinking it was that George you want to speak to. But everything works. In the name of the Lord. Yeah. Now, we heard from your son, and some people will say he's living a second life. Yes, yes. Because people can say what they want. Outside there, there's no branches, there's nothing to hold on to. 17 hours, 44 miles, day into night. We cannot even come to terms to understand what he went through outside here. He could tell us, but we can't bring that here to understand. That's correct. That's correct. Right? And we could say oh, many, many things. But what I want to get from you is that when you first got the news that he was missing. I got the news about 4.30 in the afternoon when I got home. My other son, Anthony, called me and says, a diver named Redman is missing in the East Coast. And I stopped for a moment. Then I says, does he have an other name? He says, no, but it's sounding like Christopher. I know they call my son Redman because of his complexion. It's easy to say, hey, Redman, yeah, where are you going? Yeah. And I made a few phone calls and I confirmed in the group chat it was him. Like any dad and any reaction, I went into shock. And I remember saying, I cannot bury two. I cannot bury two. And I was going like this for about 10 minutes, walking, and everybody's holding me and saying, 
It's all right, it's all right, it's all right. I said, no, I can't bury two. Reason being, his mother died about 15 years ago, tragically, at the West Morin Lights, where a young man, 19 years old, broke the traffic light and killed a white horse in the road. Hmm. And I had, I had the cause to bring up them and remain as a family. And then when I calmed down and I made further calls, I realized that he was somewhere out there, but I did not know. So I looked for my old map. I have a old map of this whole entire area. I couldn't find it for about six months. I found it in six seconds. And I tucked it in and I said, let's go to. And while I was leaving, I remained very quiet. And I could remember I got quiet, 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 quiet. Everybody asked me, everything all right? And I said, yeah. I was praying and asking the Holy Spirit to go before me and clear my path because I don't know what I'm dealing with. And on the way up, we got here at this same beach here around 9 o'clock the night. Right, right, right here. Right here. Yeah. And I stood on the bank and I look out. And I remember saying, Chris, you're out there? Is it okay? We go find you. And I left here and I went to the police station. I got there around 10.30 the night. And I remember clearly there was about 50 people in the, in the, in the, in the yard of the police station and about 20 inside. And when I got out of the car, I heard somebody say, hey, look at his dad, he go tell me what to do. And I go, oh, okay. And I went in the police station. And at that time, you could have heard a pin drop. Everything just went silent. And I said, good night, good night. Dad, how are you going? I said, all right. And what are we going to do? I said, OK. And I asked a couple of questions. And I opened my old trusty map, which is about 70 years old or more. And I said, give me the coordinates. Now, this beach here is not on the map. It's not named on the map. So I had to average between Rampan Algas and Kumana where they, they shoot from. Because I thought they went from Balandra. You understand? And they said they went 25 miles downstream. Straight out there beyond. That's, that's out here. Straight outside there beyond sight. You can't see where, where, where they went to. And they were 17 miles outside of Manzanella Point. So I drew the coordinates and I pushed it out and I said, Oh, there's right here. And they said to me, Yeah, but you know thing? I say, Yeah, I come to show you what to do. <laughs> yeah. I say, Oh, you know where Ollie was? I say, Oh, was on Damien Rock, you know. Some of the biggest sharks I've ever seen is out there, eight, nine hundred, and they tell me it had bigger than that. I say, My God. I said, anyway, I stopped and I remained silent for a minute and not a man spoke in that station. I said, I give my son a 1% chance of surviving. And everybody goes, but dad, that's your son. How you can give him 1%? I said, let me tell you something. E men of little faith. You tell me if I have the faith of a mustard seed, I can move a mountain. I'm about to move a mountain out there. You could take the whole tree, the branch, the roots, the leaves, the, the flowers, everything. That's all your own. I only need one seed. So tell me how the tide was moving. I said the tide was moving up and in. I said, right. I said, if he does follow the five golden rules I give to him, he's coming home. And I felt this hand, my left hand, just leave my body and start to strip because the map is a big map and it stretch 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 and it stretch. I said I'm going to find him right there and I point to the exact spot my son came ashore. I never went to that beach. I never saw that beach in my life. I said that's where you will find him and I left and they said well you understand? We, we could go out in the night. I said watch me. If you go out in the night and you run over him, what you think? What, how you think you're explaining that to me? 
and you ain't have no big searchlight, he might be down there and he might down there. You might only stress him out because he might see you up there and he fight down there. Let's leave it for in the morning. God will take care of that. And I left and I went home. And when I got home, I lit a candle. And I put it on his desk. And I said, the Our Father. And I said, Chris, watch this light and come home. Please, Chris, I can't bury you. Come now, man, come home. Right, come home. And I went and sleep. About three o'clock, I smelled the candle. You know when you're out a candle, there's yeah, a particular yeah, yeah, scent? Yeah, yeah. That's the exact time we set foot on the phone. You got that? I said, well, either or, but who knows, he must come out short. Maybe lower down. I didn't expect him to lower down. Although my finger point there. Yeah, yeah. Right? So I wake up in the morning, and as I was about getting ready and walked out in the yard, my brother Ricardo called me. He said, They find him? I said, What? They find him? And I remained frozen time. He alive. I drop on my knees. I sure it register about 2.5 or 3. <laughs> I am sure of that. I drop on my knees in the name of Jesus. And I lie down on that ground and I hug up that ground and I kiss that ground. I know how this earth feels to hug it up. I know how to, it, I felt my whole hand went around this world and thank you Jesus. I couldn't care whether the dog run there, the cat run there, it didn't matter with me at all. Right? He is alive. Right? Well, of course I broke down. We gathered ourselves and talking to him I realized that he collapsed and I had to rush him in. And I asked a question, did they give him any IV? The answer was no, I said, that is where the problem is. I said, we will go Sunny Grand, because then, by that time, the ambulance is on its way with him coming down. And we got to uh, Sunny Grand, and Sunny Grand Hospital was buzzing like if the Prime Minister was coming in on the ambulance. I tell you, they, they are real sharp to the point that that organization up there in Sunny Grand. And it should anyone they all get sick, go Sunny Grand Hospital. We all get fixed up. Everybody in Trinidad knows that. And when he came in in the ambulance, everybody cleared away and he come out here. He said, Da? I said, Christopher, that is you? He said, Yeah. I said, What takes you so long to get here? He said, You're playing your talk, eh? A man gets his skin outside the whole day, he asked me how long, and he started to smile. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, that's the way our life is. We laugh in our family. We joke at each other and one another, and that's our happiness. So they took care of him, they did all his bad work, they even checked me out, too, because I was looking a little stressed. Mm. They're excellent health service in Sunny Grande. It's a brand that they have, which I believe they have been exported into the other regions, right, for a betterment of service. I commend them for that. Uh, we left him there. I said, well, I can't stay here. The doctor had to see about him. Right? Yeah, they keep him, they keep him. Let's not stress him out. Let's not stress out ourselves. And I come home, and later in the night, Antonio Rodriguez brought him down at us. And it went across like a flash. He has given his testimony in the church, in prayer group meetings, and it's a fantastic run. I walk through the mall and um, everybody's recognizing me and as the dad who was there with him. And I learned right after, the Muslims, the Hindus, the Catholics, the Presbyterian, the Anglicans, the Jehovah Witness, the Baptists, and all them religious were praying, they were praying for my son that night. I never knew that. I, I find this out after and it's amazing. I believe the Pope might have to put in a new chapter in the Bible in prayers you know, for him. The amount of prayers that went out for my child. Since then, it has been a great run. It has been a fantastic run telling this story in faith. And I was stand here as a father. I'm 69 years old. He just turned 25 a few days ago. 
there is a God. And I felt the presence of God in my life again. I was in a blue room and I remember asking in this dream, God, what you want me to do? And a voice, in a voice told me, not what you could do for me, what I could do for you. And out of that born this idea of never give up. And in the naming of this beach, when they wanted to put here as Christopher Bugro, we said no, because he's a very modest child, a very humble child. He said, my name. He said, let's put something that would bring a ring to it and, and will bring a message to the people of Trinidad and to me. How about Chris Cole? And we said, okay. And the, the Sandy Grandi Regional Corporation, thanks to Terry Rondon and Minister of Local Government, who was saying, I think is his name. Yeah. They made it happen. And that's why we have this sign there. This is the birthplace. And this Chris Cove will go out to Trinidad and Tobago and worldwide. We have already sent jerseys abroad. And um, I don't have funds to do it. I do it out of my little pension. I know if Ember will increase it this coming budget. But uh, I sent the message out. Yeah. It's in the States right now. And I tell people, if you read this, you'll see the message. It is C H R I S T Christ C O V E R S U in His blood. That's the meaning of Christo. I said that's a story to tell. So we are now talking to the people here, and I would like to mention of a young lady. This in that house over there, named Miss Joseph. At quarter to six, before anybody knew anything about Christopher, on the 11th of April, she got up in that house there and made milk for Christopher to drink. And everybody asked, well, what are you doing that for? She said, well, that is for the boy when he comes ashore. At quarter to six, remember, we only get to this news half past six. She had the faith. She never gave up faith. They never give up faith of Christopher. Everywhere I carry this child, this is like Jesus Christ himself. You know, Chris, how are you going? Chris, how are you going? Every fun. It's a fantastic experience as a dad to know I have given my child a discipline to follow. And I told him, if ever you get into trouble, follow the five golden rules. One, assess the situation. Never panic. Keep calm. Two, make a decision because it's only you and you are going to make a decision. There's nobody out there to ask you. Think it right? Three, pray like you never prayed before. Four, strip yourselves of all your unnecessary weight. If you have clothes, strip it off. And five, dump your equipment. We could buy, actually. Stark has come forward to replace his equipment. We can buy more equipment for you. So we have you here. And I see my child and I watched him sitting there and he is stronger every time he gives his testimony. This is the strongest testimony I've seen him give so far. This one today. This one today. It's top of the line. Well, maybe it's because of how the connection started it and how it, it entered it. Oh yeah, you know? it's a funny thing, you know, the two vehicles that came up here this morning, they both carry the same number plate, different um, series, yeah. but the same number plate, 14, 13, 14, 13. Yeah. It's, it, it's kind of wonderful to see how these things just coexist, yeah. Yeah. right? We intend to come back up here. He's started for being a feature speaker um, in, a, in the Anglican school mm. up here. Uh, in their graduation in June. He is at Atlantic LNG. He is at Living Waters later this month. He has uh, about two or three more um, engagements. engagements to run. But it's a fantastic run. And today we don't have much time. We have about two or three minutes. Yes. What final message you would like to leave to your today? The final message is this. is going to the youth. And I realized this in when we were searching for Christopher. 
When you're leaving home, you use too many of you all are missing in this country. Tell your parents where you're going. And if you ain't going there, call them and tell them. Because it was looking for the beach in a needle in a haystack to find out this is where he left because I could not tell the Coast Guard exactly what it is. And as Chris said, never give up. There is a God. Jesus is there. There is a God. Never give up. Talk to your parents. Parents, talk to your children. Let us eventually listen, like how Chris listened to me. Thank you, and God bless this nation. Well, viewers, it was a long drive to reach here this morning, what we did. And I am happy that I'm here today because I think that this young man, the faith that Christopher has and the faith that his dad has, it only goes to show that if you really set your mind and your, 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 your faith, you can achieve anything. And I really, really you know, want to thank you all for giving me the opportunity to come here and chat with you all this morning. It's great. And I want to wish you all all the best. It's great. And I know that he's going to go very far because he he's will. a very humble young man. He will. And with you as his guide, oh, yeah. he has far to go. I, as a father, I am backing all my children. Yeah. And I have plenty, yeah? Yeah. He's only one of many. Many. You don't have a football team, though? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Again, viewers, we want to thank you. Um, this was a very powerful um, interview this morning. And as I said before, this wasn't a story. This is an experience and a message that this young man experienced and of life here himself today. So we hope that you enjoy it. And if you are viewing this program and you want to assist this young man in any way possible, there are going to be some numbers on the screen. Feel free to call and lend your support. Thank you again. See you at another community. Never give up.